Hi everyone, uh, today we are going to go over how to cover your cake uh, with fondant. And right here I have a pre-packaged um, piece of fondant uh, from Renshaw. And it's exactly the size or the amount that I need. I need about, I figured like 40 ounces for my 8 inch. Um, I'll definitely have extra, but because Renshaw pre-packages, it's really nice um, and you don't have to measure out. So before I get started, I'm going to just soften this fondant up. If you're having trouble softening it up, you can always put it in the microwave for about um, 30 seconds and that should help. So I'm also using an Ateco mat um, to help along with rolling this out really nice and smooth. You don't necessarily have to have an Ateco mat um, if you have some sort of um, large uh, wooden board like we have you can use or a, a large piece of countertop. Just as long as you have um, some cornstarch, and I just put cornstarch down. So before I get started really quick, I want to know how far or how wide I need my fondant out to be. And that's based on the height of your cake and the width. So. So my cake is a little over four inches. So almost five. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add five and five together, that makes 10. And then the top, that makes eight. So 18 inches and you're gonna wanna go a little bit bigger. So I would say four um, inches more so I'm going to try to get it to 22 inches. And as you notice, I'm kind of pivoting the fondant. And this is a good way to get it to stretch out. If I were to just keep rolling like this, I'm not, or just back and forth, it's not going to want to move, and I'm my arms will be getting very tired because of this. So I really want this to stretch out. And I'm also moving it. It's starting to want to get sticky or stick in the middle so I want to add some cornstarch so that doesn't happen okay what you're gonna find is that when you're rolling it out um, you're gonna find that you're gonna get some air bubbles so I'm just taking a little um, stick pin here and poking those and just trying to get rid of those air bubbles. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this in the mat. Okay, 
And then I'm going to bring over my cake. And I have here um, just a, a sheet pan board. It's just cardboard. You can find it at Walmart. You can also use a work mat as well. Those are easy to find as well. And I will show you why I use this. Okay, so I'm kind of just kind of gauge where it's at. I want it to kind of hit the uh, butcher block. And then I'm just going to drape that over. And then peel that. So you'll get a nice, smooth surface. And then what I want to do is make sure that the top has no air bubbles. So I'm just going to make sure with my fondant smoother. And then I'm going to start going around. I'm working my way around. And I'm just rubbing the fondant against the buttercream. And it's a lot easier, you'll get less drapery if you have a larger piece of fondant. And you have to work really fast with this stuff. Um, you're not going to really be able to focus on one part at a time because while you're doing that, the other side of the cake, cake could be drying out. Okay, so this is basically, I'm just holding the drape and I'm rubbing and smoothing down with my other hand. Make sure, ladies, if you've got nails, you really want to make sure you don't get any nail nails in your fondant. It's going to be really hard to fix. And that's why I use some sort of mat so that I can easily turn this cake around. You can also use your turntable as well, but you do need to cut off the excess um, fondant that would be draping off your turntable because it will be pulling down. And that's when, it, when fondant then starts to tear. So I'm just flattening out these drapes on the surface and just getting this fondant stuck to the buttercream finish. just want to make sure that it's all the way at the bottom and I can see kind of a flat spot forming um, on the surface so I know where to cut and it's um, completely adhered to the cake. So if you want to go around and just lightly Take your fondant smoother. So now I'm going to cut and I'm using a pizza cutter. I'm just going to go around. You can also use a very sharp paring knife if you'd like or an X-Acto knife. Okay, I'm going to cut that away. So I do have extra and I'll just use that 
for another project. Definitely don't want to throw this out unless it's like really ruined or you know something like that. Um, fondant is expensive enough so you really want to utilize it as much as possible. Also I did I did see a trick um, that really helps too to smoothen out your fondant. And just to actually just take another piece of fondant and use it to soften or actually to just smooth out any sort of nicks or anything like that. I thought that was a great, great technique. You just want to make sure that this piece of fondant is not sticking to the actual cake because then it might actually end up peeling off or coming off your buttercream. Okay, so here we have it, okay? Um, if you see any air bubbles, um, which you probably will, you can use your little pin and just poke it. And I don't see anything here, so. Um, okay, so what I would normally do is I would pop this off and I would put it on a cake drum um, to set and then I would start decorating. Also, before you put it on a cake drum, you want to put some royal icing so that your, your actual cake board sticks to your cake drum. If you just plop it on the cake without doing that, it's, this cake will start sliding and you don't want that to happen. So um, you can find these on Amazon. I'll have a list of what I used. So, um, all right, so that's, that's about it. So thanks for watching.